it's uh, like this. My first thing that I wanted to do was I felt that the, the drums were just a tad bit, uh, I wouldn't say, yeah, sure, a bit anonymous. I wanted them to have a bit more uh, uh, accents and a bit more focus. So what I did was that, well, so this is a fairly typical thing that I do is that I'd start off just adding like one color here, like one little thing. So I have a, a, a feel of where I'm going with it. And also what it means is that I can do, um, I have a starting point. I've got something to navigate from. So what I did was that I added a, uh, a bell, a little uh, shaker, tambourine bell thing, um, on the two and fours of it. So that sounds like this, if I'm lucky. Yep, there we go. And then we've got the uh, the second part, the one with the uh, the uh, Meltron arpeggio. And there I added. Let's see, I've got that going on. Well, this is a mess now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, a, uh, I added a, uh, like, triplet version, a triplet version of the same shaker. Sorry, this is very confusing. I lost a track, that's why. So, a triplet, uh, well, that would be an eighth note in 6-8, whatever it is, so. And what this, uh, little uh, section, to me it sounds like a, almost a dreamy kind of psychedelic thing going on. So this was very easy for me to just like sink my teeth into. So the next thing I did was uh, 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 the cymbal swells into it. So you've got the... And here we go. Cymbal swells, and to add even more of that dreamy thing, I added these line bells, which I really don't like because I think they're too airy fairy, but it worked good for this because it's got that really clean sweep. I, I prefer uh, like cluster chimes and stuff that don't have that kind of uh, you know, Christmas panto feel to it. So, but I added that because it just becomes like a high pitched lead in to the section. And here we go. Also, uh, for the verses, I did one of my favorite things, which is uh, to add a uh, brush part. Uh, and I'm really bad at playing brushes, but if we listen to it without the music, we can hear it. Also, the thing about that is that it's not supposed to feel like, oh my god, there's brushes all over the track. It's not about that. Uh, because what the brushes do is that they give it a high, high frequency sweep thing going on, but it's rhythmic. So you've got like almost, so it like lifts it frequency wise, but it still gives it that movement forward, which is wonderful. So, yes, overdub everything with brushes and you'll be okay. But um, then I had some more ideas about the psychedelic part, and I wanted to do a, a glockenspiel thing, but I didn't want it to be a um, like melody thing. I wanted it to be more like a ostinato thing that would go parallel with the uh, Meltron flutes. So if we listen to the Meltron flutes again, here we go. <laughs> So what I did was that I added first, I'm doing, a, there's a lot of switching going on there, so I hope you're not car sick. Here we go. Uh, this is the first one then. Mm -hmm. 
tan 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 So what you got is you're going like it. What is it? Gun 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 Which is great because there you got like the loopy six eight thing but with a weird half note triplet thing, right? And then we had the other one, which goes like this. Which is just like the quarter notes, right? And then you put them together, and it goes. And then you add these guys, which... Over here, and they sound something like this in context. And it gives it some kind of like a bit of menacing, scary, but still like naive feel to it. Okay. And this is the, uh, the, and then all of a sudden we've got this, it's just like, it's not, none of this is important, none of this is like, um, like fundamental for the song at all, it does fine without it, but what it does is that it gives every, every section a bit more colour, get a bit more like, ah, it's more chiselled out, that there's something going on specifically for every section of the song that hasn't been there before. So it becomes like this, which I've talked about many, many times, but it's, talk it's about like moving from one section to another, taking the listener on a stroll, having this idea that you're telling them something, and you're always like leading them on. And it doesn't, to me, it doesn't, because some people think that, well, it's too scattered, it should be like the same sounds for three and a half minutes, otherwise sound is confusing for a big, fat ear. And that's not true at all. Because I don't, I think people tend to over theorize what, what you actually listen to. You listen to the vocals. You listen to the story. You do I like this singer? Do I like what he's telling me? Um, that's what it's about. And then all these colors that are going on, they just like help the vocalist and the the lyrics along. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's no there's no good punchline. It's not like the apple did it. But there you go. So yeah, it's going to be good. And also the good thing about this, just one, one last thing, is that when I send these things off, it's all up to Paul. Whatever he wants to use, he can use. If he doesn't like it, he doesn't have to use anything. If he just likes the shaker thingy on the two and four, that's wonderful. Um, because, I mean, this is from my standpoint. And then I do the idea to the end, and then I'm done. And then I send them over, and then whatever ends up on the album, ends up on the album. I'm not really, um, it's not up to me, I'm just like a, I'm a, I'm a tool in his hands. Alright? I'm a tool in many ways. Alright, hey, hey.